China marks the 75th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic. Local ceremonies marking National Day. And Israel launches ground operations in Lebanon. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Today is National Day and the flag raising ceremony was held at Tiananmen Square in Beijing this morning, marking the 75th anniversary of the People's Republic of China. The square was filled with over 100,000 visitors and tourists eager to witness the occasion. Sakura Ip reports. The flag raising ceremony started at around 6 a.m. as soldiers sound their clarions. The national flag was carried into Tiananmen Square by members of the Chinese People's Liberation Army on a guard. Thousands of spectators gathered in the early hours, eagerly awaiting the moment the national flag was raised. Some people arrived the night before, as the five-star red flag reached the top of the flagpole. Pigeons and balloons were released into the sky, while attendants waved national flags with pride. <laughs> Ms. Li, a Guangdong student studying in Beijing, described the ceremony as striking and breathtaking. She and her friends arrived at 8 p.m. the previous night and sat on the ground throughout the night after their mat was confiscated. The week-long National Day holiday began today in mainland, attracting tourists eager for first-hand experience in the capital. Many visitors plan to explore Beijing's iconic attractions such as the Forbidden City, the Great Wall and the museums. After the ceremony, a lot of tourists and citizens stay here to take picture with the large flower basket behind me at Tiananmen Square to celebrate the National Day. Sakuri, TV News, Beijing. Here in Hong Kong, top government officials, representatives of mainland organizations and various sectors in the city attended flag-raising ceremonies to mark National Day. Speaking at the reception afterwards, Chief Executive John Lee said the city must make use of its advantages to further contribute to the nation. Timothy Lee reports. Disciplinary forces marched in formation as the SCR government held its flag-raising ceremony at Golden Bahonia Square in Wan Chai this morning. <laughs> Chief Executive John Lee and former CE Lan Cheng Ying, who is also the vice chairman of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, were among the dignitaries taking part in the event. Also in attendance were representatives of mainland organizations in Hong Kong, former chief executives Donald Tsang and Carrie Lam, senior SAR officials, and members of the executive and legislative councils. Marine police and fire services vessels, as well as government flying service helicopters, paid tribute to the nation via sea and air. Speaking at a celebratory reception held at the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center later in the morning, Chief Executive John Lee noted the significance of this National Day. He said it was the first National Day after the city completed the historic tasks of Article 23 legislation and improving governance at the district level. Lee said as Hong Kong's economy is undergoing a transitional period, the city must seize opportunities, take advantage of its strength, and contribute to the motherland. Meanwhile, Zheng Yanxiong, director of the Central Government's Liaison Office in Hong Kong, and members of the office also held a flag-raising ceremony at their headquarters in Western at 7 a.m. And a flag-raising ceremony was organized by the office of the Commissioner of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Hong Kong. Besides governmental organizations, some local youth groups performed special National Day marches symbolizing the date of October 1st and the number of 75.
Timothy Lee, TVB News. Discounts and deals galore today, offered by various businesses to celebrate National Day. Reduced prices in not just eateries and retail shops, but also hotels, cinemas and transport facilities. Promotion campaigns citywide to mark the 75th anniversary of the People's Republic of China. Discounts on offer at more than 3,600 retail shops and restaurants. This chain supermarket selling crackers at 30% off. Like here, before we only buy one or two, today we buy like five, five of them. I think it's about 20% to 10% cheaper. Like the uh, coffee. Because we also save our money, and then there's of course, of course uh, we are, yeah, we are quite uh, enjoy of this holiday. Yeah. It is not easy. This is something we offer so that everybody, Hong Kong citizen, mainland citizen, and even uh, tourists, to come and enjoy the celebration with us, so that they can go shopping, go eating, and enjoy themselves. Chen also said they are not estimating the exact revenue generated from the campaign, stressing that the goal of the discount scheme is to celebrate National Day. Discounts and deals at wet markets and stalls as well. Many products sold at just 75 percent of the original price, symbolizing the 75th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. This chain restaurant also offering 30 percent off for patrons. Its manager said business increased by around 50 percent. Some restaurants even plan to continue the discount campaign for one month. Moviegoers today are treated with half-price tickets as well. The citizen hopes such discounts can be extended to Ocean Park and Disneyland. The MTR2 offering a 25 percent fare discount for every ride. That includes cross-boundary trips. Passengers can enjoy the discount using their octopus cards on the MTR network, light rail and MTR bus surfaces. That applies to seniors with a $2 concessionary fare as well, meaning they can enjoy the ride with just $1.50. Children can even take free bus rides on most routes. Tram rides? Free of charge for all the entire day. Two-star ferry lines between Chimsha Choi, Wan Chai and Central free of charge too for three consecutive days. More than 160,000 mainland tourists had entered Hong Kong as of 4 this afternoon, with most taking advantage of the Golden Week holidays. Many visitors said they would like to watch tonight's fireworks display, but would either leave the same day or stay just one night. Scores of tourists could be seen arriving in the city via high-speed rail at West Kowloon Station. High-speed train services between the city and the Beijing West and Shanghai Hongqiao stations have also been increased to facilitate the increase in passengers. This, as Lowell Port, remains the busiest border crossing today. In Thailand, a bus carrying young students with their teachers caught fire in suburban Bangkok today. 25 of those on board feared dead. The bus was carrying 44 passengers from central Uthai Thani province to Aitaya for a school trip when the fire started around midday in the northern suburb of Patum Thani. Officials said the number of fatalities has yet to be confirmed. But based on the number of survivors, 25 people are feared, feared dead. Prime Minister Pei Tung Tan Shinawad offered her condolences in a post on social media. She said the government would take care of medical expenses and compensate the victims' families. Israel has sent some ground forces into southern Lebanon in a major escalation to the conflict in the Middle East. The Iran-backed Hezbollah group has vowed to engage Israeli troops on the ground despite recently suffering a series of blows including last Friday's killing of its leader Hassan Nasrallah. Israel continued to launch airstrikes against southern Lebanon, parts of the capital Beirut and the eastern Baqa Valley. U.S. President Joe Biden has called for an immediate ceasefire. Nasi Karim with more. This is the aftermath of an Israeli airstrike on a Palestinian refugee camp. But this is not Gaza, this is southern Lebanon. This is Ain al-Hilwe, the largest of Lebanon's 12 camps for displaced Palestinians. Six people, including three children, died. Among them was a son and daughter-in-law of Munir Makhtar, a senior official of the Palestinian Fatah group, who was a target of the strike. His fate is unknown. The Middle East conflict is gradually moving to Lebanon as soldiers of Israel Defense Forces Elite 98th Division prepared to cross the border in northern Israel. 
The IDF said its limited, localized and targeted ground operation is the latest phase of its campaign to neutralize Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. The ultimate goal is to allow tens of thousands of Israelis to return to their homes in the north after they fled the area in the wake of the October 7th attacks. Israel hopes these airstrikes on Lebanon can maintain its military momentum after some stunning successes over the past few weeks. These include the remote explosion of thousands of pages and walkie-talkies used by Hezbollah operatives and Friday's killing of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah, as well as several of his group's top commanders. A ground operation, though, takes the IDF into Hezbollah territory, where their fighters have intimate local knowledge of the terrain and conditions. The group's deputy chief, Naim Qasim, said Hezbollah fighters are ready to engage Israeli troops. U.S. President Joe Biden was asked if he was aware of Israel's plans and if he was comfortable with it. I'm more aware than you might know, and I'm comfortable with them stopping. We should have a ceasefire now. Thank you. Israel last week rejected a U.S. and French proposal for a 21-day ceasefire to negotiate peace. Around 1,000 people have been killed in Lebanon over the past few weeks. With growing fears of an all-out war, many Lebanese are evacuating their homes. These people are trying to seek refuge in Syria. The governments of Germany and Bulgaria have sent planes to Lebanon to get their citizens out. 89 Bulgarians returned to Sofia on Monday, with more on the way. The European Union's Joseph Borrell said an all-out war must be avoided. Arms should now be silenced, and the voice of diplomacy should speak and to be heard by all. The sovereignty of both Israel and Lebanon has to be guaranteed. Nazvi Karim, TVB News. And still ahead, and fireworks display over Victoria Harbour later tonight. The National Day fireworks display at Victoria Park tonight will include a drone performance for the first time. Scores of residents have already made their way to the Chimsha Chui Promenade to save the best spots. The fireworks display is set to begin at 9 p.m. and will last for a total of 23 minutes. The performance will be split into eight scenes and incorporate elements of bamboo leaves, symbolizing the recent arrival of giant pandas to the city. A five-minute drone show will feature images of the number 75 as well as pandas. This after a drone show at the West Kowloon Cultural District was cancelled on Monday night because of technical issues and replaced by pre-recorded images. The National Day Race Day was held at the Sha Tin Race Course today, with members of the public enjoying free admission. Total betting was over $1.5 billion, up 7.5 percent from the same event last year. Samantha Lee was at Sha Tin. The Sha Tin race course was open for free admission at 11 this morning, with large crowds lining up to get in. There were also tour groups and other tourists. Some people took photos with the bronze racing horse statue. It's like an amazing opportunity to experience a, a race like this. I think it's the first time in my life that, I've, uh, that I'm going to experience a horse race because it is so big in Hong Kong. Um, I really want to come here, so I put all of the effort to, to visit this uh, horse race today. Because I'm Muslim, so uh, we're not allowed to gamble. Um, so I'm just here for, for the five and just the experience. I um, just enjoyed the racing because I heard that this is uh, famous in Hong Kong. Uh, I think they passed the end point. That's um, really exciting. Long time no come to uh, this uh, uh, racing. So this summer we, with my wife come to here <laughs> to enjoy the party. <laughs> The opening ceremony came with stunning performances, including martial arts and drumming. Ten races were held today, with the focus being the National Day Cup trophy, contested by eight horses for the $4.2 million prize. The winner was Beauty Waves, ridden by Alexis Bedell. And to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China, the Hong Kong Jockey Club made themed offers for merchandise, food and drinks. Some items were sold at 75% of original prices at the racer's shop. Apart from the special discounts, a range of national date themed products will be available as gifts at the Jockey Club shops, including this gold combo set and commemorative stamp. Samantha Lee, TVB News. And that's the news. Thank you for watching.